Good morning and welcome everyone back to We Are Tottenham TV. Not only is it West Ham review day, it's also transfer deadline day. Uh, but don't get your hopes up, guys, because Dan Killed Patrick has already said it's going to be a quiet day or he thinks it's going to be a quiet day for Tottenham. But he also said don't rule anything out with Paratici at the helm as well. So um, we'll be here up until the deadline giving you updates on anything Spurs related. Um, but first and foremost, let's get into the West Ham game yesterday. 1-1 at the London Stadium. Not a great performance by any stretch of the imagination. Um, what did you make out of the game yesterday, Sim? Yeah, I was pretty disappointed by what I saw yesterday from the team, not going to lie. I thought we were, by and large, um, kind of lacking in, in energy. We were lacking in... Um, creativity with ideas um, we were struggling um, for a lot of the game yesterday I think there were times where we were penning West Ham in but they seemed to have a clear plan when we were in possession allow the ball to go to Sanchez and then trigger a press and that was um, probably what um, what the game plan was for Moyes and it was a very good game plan because we definitely struggled to build from the back once Sanchez um, started and, and Emerson were getting too involved in the build-up and I think with without Romero, you know he's our backup, and I think I'm not I'm not he's not here to say that Sanchez is a terrible player or that we can't cope with him in the team. But when teams plan for him like that, it it becomes very difficult, and that was their main source of success um, yesterday. The, fa the factor of matter is with Sanchez, right? It happens every time where he comes in for a couple of games and and he looks all right, and then you know the third or fourth game when when he's asked, asked to have a long stretch in the team, that's when the problems start to come. And I think he's been all right up until now, but it clearly showed the need for a Christian Romero to come back in the team yesterday. As much as I've been bigging up Sanchez as well, uh, the last three games, you can't have him in the team uh, for a long stretch of time. I don't know if it's a long stretch of time. I just think it's the quality of the opposition. Is brought, you know, it's going to be a tougher game against West Ham than it was against Forest or against Wolves. I think West Ham always up for it at the London Stadium against Spurs in, in their biggest game of the season. And they know that. And there was definitely a lot more energy from West Ham that, than I've seen from them um, in previous games this season. So I think Sanchez, um, again, defensively, I still think he did a decent job. But on the ball, he was definitely suspect. And I think him and Emerson down that side was a bit of a, a recipe of disaster at times when we were trying to um, pass through West Ham. It was very, very difficult for us to do that. And then once we got into their final third, which we did quite a few times yesterday, um, we didn't really have that creativity to break them down. It was only really Ivan Perisic causing West Ham problems. Apart from him, there wasn't too many... Um, it was him and a bit of Kulu as well. Yeah, and there wasn't too many other avenues where we were really hurting them. Son and Kane... Um, weren't maybe getting on the ball uh, enough um, in the final third. I think Kane actually got on the ball quite a bit in the middle part of the pitch, especially when we were uh, breaking on teams, um, breaking on West Ham. But Son, again, a bit of a no-show. Wasn't, really wasn't really on form yesterday. And it was a disappointing performance and a disappointing result. But having said that, we did lose. We got the point. Uh, and we, we move on with five games unbeaten and it's not the end of the world in the end in terms of result. No, it's not the end of the... the in terms of result, it's not the end of the world, but it is worrying the, these performances that are, that are happening now. And I think yesterday um, was different in a sense to the other performances where we grew into the game and got better in the game as the game wore on. I felt like we got worse as the game wore on yesterday. And that passing out the back in the second half was literally so embarrassing to watch. It really was. I mean... F from Lloris. Lloris was terrible passing it out the back. I mean, how many times did he play a shocking pass in that second half? Sanchez, Davis, Dyer. I mean, they were all at it yesterday. Um, with apps. It was embarrassing. It really was. And obviously, their goal resulted in it. And the most frustrating thing about it all is how avoidable that goal was that we conceded. That's how yeah. frustrating the whole thing was because if that goal goes doesn't go in, you know, you could be talking about three points um, in another game which we probably didn't deserve to take three points. But it's just so frustrating that we concede like that where it's just completely avoidable, man. It's so, so avoidable. Yeah, we switched off. 
I think I think the whole team switched off. Hoybier was talking to the referee. Basuma was let Suchek run off him. Yeah. Um, we allowed an easy throw go right into Antonio's feet, although that was definitely a foul throw. Uh, looking back on it, um, surprised that wasn't called. But uh, but um, we, we we just completely switched off in a in a really stupid moment and. Um, it was a moment where we had pretty good control of the game as well, actually. We started the second half fairly well after a, a fairly lacklustre first half. Um, and we looked to be in control, but then once the goal went in, momentum shifts and West Ham then all of a sudden on the front foot. So re it must be really frustrating for Conte for that goal to go in when you're in, when you're in a good stage of the game. And then after that, we didn't recover. And I think Conte as well... Um, made a change really late why he didn't change it before why he left Hoybier on when he was clearly struggling with an injury why he didn't maybe give um spencer run out at right wing back when we needed some impetus going down that side um these are these are questions which uh he's gonna have to um try try and i mean not doesn't have to answer but he, these are questions that he's gonna have to think about and work on because only having charlatan who didn't make an impact um, we're still lacking on a few things on the pitch going into the last stage of the game. We nearly lost it at the end. So mm. I don't know why he only made one change. He said he wanted to keep stability of the team, but I don't know why bringing on some of the players you have on the bench will lose that stability. I don't mm. really understand it. He could have done more yesterday, Conte, in my opinion. Um, I mean, how many times? We were saying changes were crying out for so early on in the game yesterday. And he waited till late and only one change when you can make a possible of five. Uh, when you've got players like Sessegnon and, and Spence on the bench that can come on and do something from wing back. They really can. So um, he's got to be utilising the squad a bit more. Um, he will be utilising the squad over the next few weeks. He says a lot of changes are going to come. Well, rotation is going to be used for Fulham, he said. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But let's talk about some key moments in, in terms of the penalty or the non-penalty decision with the VAR. Uh, now seeing it back, what would you uh, think of it? Um, it's a difficult one uh, because we've seen um, decisions like that not be overturned so many times when a ball when when your hand is so high like it was for Questwell, I've seen the replay. Obviously, it does hit his head and then go onto his hand, but it definitely hits his hand. Um, kind of like rolls up his arm, doesn't it? Yeah. <sighs> I think that VAR shouldn't, shouldn't have got involved with that, to be honest. I, d I think it was a harsh penalty, but I don't think VAR should have been getting involved just because I don't think it was a clear and obvious error. I think some people might have said that to handball. Some people might not. I don't know if by the letter of the law, um, it's definitely not a handball. I think West Ham got a bit lucky that the, that the VAR decided to overturn it, although we got a bit lucky that it was given. I think... I think in those situations we should go with the referee's decision on on the pitch. So I'm I'm a bit annoyed because I've seen I've seen decisions against Tottenham where similar things have happened and the penalty stands. So I don't understand why in this instance um, it was apparently it was such an obvious error that they had to go to VAR. But in all uh, when it when when it all said and done, they probably did get the right decision in all honesty. But I think just a bit frustrating that they that they pick and choose this high bar that they go with, don't they? You know, you don't know which decision is going to be overturned and which isn't. Sometimes that's that and that can that's probably why Conte is really frustrated and I understand it. So I think we have a right to be a bit aggrieved from that point, but I, I, I'm, it's not a massive talking point in front of us, and we, we won't we won't one nil up anyway. Yeah, I personally think um, after watching it back, I didn't think it was a penalty, to be honest. I think it was it's nothing the player could have done in that situation to avoid that, in my opinion. And um, I think the, the ref probably came to the right call in the end, uh, to be honest. I mean, it's nothing like what the, the decision the ref made last week against um, Nottingham Forest not sending off that player. That was a disgrace. Mm. I actually think the ref, um, VAR got it right at the end yesterday. But on the flip side of that, I think that the ref put in a shocking display yesterday. I think that time and time again, every single decision went West Ham's way yesterday. Every single one. I couldn't believe my eyes what I was seeing. Even like corners and throw-ons and stuff like that, which should have gone the other way, went the wrong way. And it was just like, what are you playing at? Why is the level of officiating so bad in this league? Yeah, care. and talking about the VAR decision, some people have brought up in the comments, it took an age. Three, to, four minutes. That yeah. was ridiculous. Yeah. Why did, how many times do you have to look at an incident? Does it hit his head onto his arm or not? That's literally how, why can, Why is that taking more than 60 seconds? Like we all have a TV right at home. You can, you, we can see an instant replay within seconds of the incident, what's happened. And 
make a judgment. These are supposed to be professional referees who know the laws of the game inside and out. Why is it taking three or four minutes to look over a decision and advise on uh, advise a decision on the referee? The only reason it is is because they're not sure and they and they're worried about other repercussions or they're worried about um, if they're getting the decision right. It n there is no decision I can think of. Like when, when, with all the cameras we have now in this day and age, that should take three or four minutes to look over uh, if you're a professional referee. Most people, as I say, seeing at home can probably look at the decision with an instant replay and make a, make a call instantly in seconds, yeah. within a second. So why can't a VAR official do Agreed. that? I completely Don't agree understand with you. it. It's so what, what, frustrating. What do you say to Conte uh, in Conte's comments on VAR that he said maybe England shouldn't have VAR, the fans don't like it, uh, all this kind of stuff that he was saying in this press conference? <sighs> I think in many ways VAR's improved, but when, I mean, when incidents like that happen, it's really frustrating um, when it takes so long. I haven't, to be honest, I haven't seen too many times when it's taken as long as it did yesterday, recently. Um, for v I think when VAR first came in, there was a lot of teething problems and they're starting to be ironed out a bit, but I think the incidents like yesterday obviously caused frustration. Um, look, it's here to stay. We're not going to bin it off. and I don't think we should bin it off, but... I do think we need to work even harder to, to improve the, the standard of it because um, it's a bit ridiculous that uh, the decisions like yesterday where, I mean, how, I mean if, how close is it? I mean, how many times do you have to re replay it and look over it again? If, it, if it's that close, then you shouldn't overturn it if you're looking over for him, in my opinion. You, know, you should only overturn it if you can literally see after, a few, after at least 60 seconds that it's a clear ever error. It's not it's clearly not a clear error if you're taking four minutes over it, are you? How can that be a clear error? Absolutely. So, um, I, but, the, but the rule that VAR has is that they how it works is they ask the referee what he saw, and if the what if what ma if what he said he saw doesn't match with what actually happened, then that's grounds for a VAR review. Mm. So if the referee didn't see it hit his head and then his hand, if he only saw it hit his hand, then that ha then why is it taking so long? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I, but, but look, I, I think Conte was probably just a bit emotional yesterday. We said we should bin off the AR. I don't think we should bin it off. As he always is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it, but it's, uh, be, he must be frustrated. And I, I, I understand a lot of managers being frustrated with some of the inconsistencies and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I do think majority of decisions are, are getting corrected. And mm. that's, that's, the, that's a good thing. In time... Um you know, moving away from VAR now, in terms of the game yesterday, I mean, we both said yesterday after the game um, that we felt like a draw was a fair result. On reflection now, having slept on it, do you still, you know, agree with that? Um, I think probably we were a bit more fortunate than I thought mm. to get a point. That's how I'm feeling. Um, as well. But I would say that's based on the fact that late in, in the last few minutes of the game they had a flurry of they chances they should have won the game in the last 10 minutes let's yeah, be honest they should have won they, they had chances in the right at the end of the game to win it I would say up until that point it was probably an even like a fair result mm -hmm. or a draw but that flurry of chances probably leans it a bit more in West Ham's favour where they probably feel a bit more disappointed they didn't win I think in overall in the essence of the game um, I think it was fairly even I don't like I think they had they had chances we had chances um, I think uh, in terms of stats I think they had 14 shots we had 13 both had four on target um, but I think it was just those late flurry of chances at the end which were pretty good especially that Bowen one literally, which was literally the last kick of the game he really should yeah, have scored that or, past the post, or, or, or at least um, someone should have uh, followed it in at the back post so we definitely got away with that but I do think in general um, a draw was probably a fair result, but probably, up, I think we probably walk away with that lucky, more lucky that we got a point than unlucky that we didn't get three for sure. Yeah, I mean, after the game, we saw the reaction of the West Ham fans. We saw the reaction of the Spurs fans. I mean, West Ham fans were so happy to take a point from that game, and then us. It felt like a loss yesterday, didn't it? It really yeah. felt like a loss. Why? Why did it feel like a loss if if they had so many good chances at the end? Was it because we just shouldn't have given away that goal? It felt like a loss because we want to go into these games and win. That's why it felt like a loss. But like, deservingly, we didn't deserve to win that game. You know what I mean? I know. But we were 1-0 up. We gave it away. Let's be honest. Uh, I think we gave it away as well at a time when we were most in control of the game. 
which is also very frustrating. Uh, and then after that, we were our own worst enemy. So it kind of felt it kind of felt self inflicted um, a lot, and that's why it's going to feel like a loss um, uh, in a game like that. And especially when West Ham aren't playing very well at the moment, starting the season with three defeats and a, and a win, a win which you know they only just got over the line against um, Aston Villa as well. So. We came into this game wanting a win. I, I, I think we all wanted a win. I, even me, who said a draw wouldn't be the worst result uh, before the game, I said I also wanted a win. Of course I do. Um, where especially when we, you know, want to close the gap to the top teams, these are the type of games that are very important. But that's the ambition of the, of, of the fans and where we're at at the moment. And uh, obviously it's going to be disappointing when you're in control of a game, you're 1-0 up and you just uh, defend like we did in the last in the, in the the in the second half for a large period. So that's why it's going to feel like a loss. Mm. But not to say, it's not to say in the grand scheme of a whole season, I don't think it's the worst result. But I think right now it's going to feel um, bitterly disappointing that... Uh, it's just it's just the way we handled the, the it was just game management and we didn't I think in the actually in a weird, weird way in the other games this season we've actually managed the game very well uh, in a, in, a, in a sense they've had we've lost control but then we earned it back and we've done well yesterday we didn't manage the game well and that was probably a really disappointing aspect of it how we had control we gained it and then we lost it in in such a self inflicted manner and then we and the most in, in, uh, disappointing thing is we they kept doing the same thing time and time uh, west ham letting sanchez have the ball then triggering a press and 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 planning for it into their hands every time what, exactly we just kept giving it to him as if like this is the solution i think conte had to conte should have spotted that should have, should have should have done something i don't know whether even doing something crazy like putting emerson or right center back and bringing on a right wing back or going to a back four Where was or romero though or romero still Where not being risked because you know we heard that he was he'd been in training the whole of last week never mind this week mm. so i mean where where was he conte said in his press conference he's ready so didn't want to didn't want to risk him didn't want to risk him not even on the bench it's crazy i mean i mean they were, he was saying about skip as well like he didn't want to risk bringing him on and he was on the bench look i'm sure conte's taking the best the best i'm sure conte wants to use him but mm -hmm. he's, he doesn't look we're still in august we're five games in we don't we don't want to risk a player um getting other i say that and then we do what we did with hoybier so it doesn't yeah. really make sense but yeah. um i understand that a manager doesn't want to risk having a long-term injury when the games are coming thick and fast and at the end of the day we did get a draw so it was, it's not like we lost but and we only we did only concede one goal but uh, but I would say that um, it's a bit frustrating that Romero keeps getting delayed a, f a few more, even though apparently he's made himself available for the last two games. Um, it hasn't he's not um, in the eleven? But trust me, I'm pretty sure if, if uh, he was r if Conte trusts that he was going to be available without any risk, I'm sure he would have played him. I've got no doubt about that. I don't think Conte's holding Romero back. I really believe Conte wants Romero back as soon as possible. But it's interesting to hear him um, say that he believes. Uh, and maybe Longley's going to get his chance over the next game or two, which is good. He was saying in his post match. I think maybe I think on, on the weekend, chance, yeah, now. on the weekend we might see some um, some more changes. Do you um, Longley comes in for the Fulham game, or he comes in for the Champions League game against Marseille. I would have him in for the Fulham game. I would I would give him a go in that one um, because you you don't want a bad start to the you don't want to risk having a bad start to the Champions League campaign, having a starting with a loss or anything like that, especially at home to Marseille. So. I think if he plays really well against Fulham, then he, then he can keep his place. But I, would, I think I, I would I would go for that, especially because Davis for me didn't have a great game as well. So I think it's a good opportunity to uh, to um, have him in, and um, hopefully he can um, do a better job than Davis uh, did um, yesterday. Davis mm. was a bit frustrating at times, but he then was. again, it was uh, the whole the, the team dynamic, especially in the last half an hour, wasn't great. Um, but let's talk about. Pesuma, who made his debut yesterday, mm. had a had a first ninety minutes in the Tottenham shirt. I tell you the truth, I wasn't that impressed with Pesuma yesterday. Um, I thought he was playing within himself a bit, um, looking for the safe option pretty much every time. Um, no, I just wasn't that impressed. I think, look, I think that it's his first game, so you're going to give him a pass, so he's going to feel his way into the team. But I think he needs to do more, to be honest, in that midfield. And I think uh, the midfield was a bit too easily uh, bypassed again yesterday and especially with Hoybier the way he was in that second half it didn't do Bissouma any favours and the fact he was on and a yellow the fact he was on a yellow card as well so 
and it being his first game. So you've got to give him a pass, I guess. Yeah, I don't think he was awful. I think there were some really good things um, in his display. But I think by and large, I want to see him take a bit more authority, like I've seen him do for Brighton a lot of times. I think... Um, He's too focused on, like, like as much as we fans get um, a bit frustrated with Hoybier with some, you know, sometimes his passing can get intercepted or whatnot. It's because he's willing to do more, more vertical passes and, and take more risk. When you do that, the risk of your passes getting intercepted is obviously going to go a lot higher, especially when you're not the best passer in the world like Hoybier. But I do appreciate that he's trying to get the, the team up the pitch. And I do appreciate that he's trying to make things happen instead of just keep ball and playing it safe all the time. And I think we need that. And I think Basuma needs to do a bit more of that as well. I think a lot of the time he's always got... Like a lot of the time he was just playing it back to Sanchez, I'm not going to lie, or, 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 or into Hoybier. And he's got to do a bit better in, um, in those situations to kind of... If we want um, him and Hoybier to be players where we, we're not always being stifled when, we've, when we're in the final third, he has to be a bit more adventurous with how he plays. And I'm sure that will come because he's got all the attributes for it. He's a really good dribbler. He's actually got a pretty good shot on him when given the chance. And he's, got, he's a pretty good passer as well. The question is, is whether he's a creative enough passer. That's all. That's and that's, and I think that's something that's always been holding him back a bit. He's a good passer, but he's not the most creative. So he needs to work on that element of his game um, to be a bit more adventurous and maybe take um, uh, and maybe take uh, what's it called authority in the game. Um, but I do think in in most in in, uh, in general, I think. The fact that he was on a yellow card definitely hampered him, but I think it was he also such a stupid yellow card yeah, to get. I mean, yeah, I can understand why he was frustrated, but, yeah, he but shouldn't on your have debut, that. on your debut, when you're making a first game against West Ham away, whatever the game is, to be honest, it doesn't matter if it's West Ham away or not. You can't be doing that early on in the game. You know you're going to get booked. Yeah, you no, know you got you have to have a bit more self control. I'm sorry. Of course, and uh, he'll learn from that. And but the fact of the matter is, I'm not really worried about Basuma at all. I'm not worried about him. It was his first game. It was a tough conditions to come in at as well against an up up for it West Ham. So I think that um, this weekend, I think he plays again against Fulham, and I'm expecting a much better game from him. To be yeah. honest, well, Ben, yeah, I'm sure Ben Tancor. Although you know, showed how much we missed him a bit yesterday with some of his composure with Yaz in the centre. But yeah, I think I, I'm not sure if the weekend will come too early. But yeah, I think. I think once he really gets acclimatised into the team, he's going to be a very good player for us. And even I saw glimpses yesterday of what he can, of, of some of the things he can do. And um, you know, it's a bit like how when Kulusevski had his first few starts, he wasn't really, didn't really impress, and people started questioning him. But I saw glimpses of what he can do in those, even in those moments where people were doubting him. I thought Kulusevski was good in his debut, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, people, yeah, people were saying he wasn't. Um, so. I think for me, I saw glimpses in Basuma, even though it was few and far between, uh, of uh, of impressive moments. So hopefully, once he once he's uh, fully acclimatised to how Conte likes to play his team and how we like to play and his teammates as well, then that will come. The, the performances will come. Um, but yesterday was a difficult game for him. Look, we talk about the bigger picture in terms of unbeaten after five games, three wins, two draws. The draws come against uh, Chelsea away and West Ham away grounds that are notoriously hard for us um, over the years but with the way we're, we're playing football at the moment are you worried going into these next into this really busy period because um, you know Conte and his team and and the Spurs team we find it very hard to play two games in a week he, he likes to have a whole week of preparation for games are I you think every manager does I know mm. every manager does but I think Conte has shown in the past and you know he, he kind of needs a week um, to prepare the team for a game are you worried you know we've got Man City away coming up next weekend we've got Fulham this weekend who, are, who have started the season really well um, or, or are you just looking at it like you know, we're getting past in games we're doing well we're getting points yeah, obviously, I want to. I want to. I want the performances to improve. I'm. I'm. I'm the level of performances, even though, um, you know, you know, we've had a diff. Let, let's be honest, we have had a fairly difficult start to the season. It's not been easy. The games we've had, mm -hmm. we had three away games, two of them in London derby. It's not. It's not. Not easy at all. Two really hard games coming up now as well. Um, yeah. Um, so obviously, I'm a bit concerned with the uh, level of performance, but. I just I see people say like the only way we can we we can break teams down is this way and the, we we need this for uh to so we we can start being creative. It's like 
last season we were swatting teams away four and five nil we're like on a regular basis at points last season and these are the same players so there's no reason we can't get back to those levels we start the season performance wise very slowly not results wise but, but why is that can you put your finger on like what is actually happening why are we have started the season looking a bit so disjointed i wouldn't say it's disjointed i don't think we've started disjointed but i think we've just we've we've lacked a bit of energy i would say um especially um especially when the opposition have a lot of possession we're giving them a bit more too much control and i and i and maybe that's something conti has to work on i'm not 100 percent sure the the reason for it to be honest it's it's difficult to put your finger on why that's happening um having said that apart from yesterday apart from the goal we conceded yesterday um i think the other goals weren't as avoidable as uh as that one i would well it's difficult well it's difficult to say but i would say that yesterday for the goal though i thought antonio's uh, assist was unbelievable I yeah he had a, really, he had a really nice he had a good uh, assist but chip into the thing he had, he had a good, a good assist, assist and had a good effort on goal at the post that was about it no i'm saying he had a good assist but that we shouldn't really let no, i know Suchek it's terrible off defending him. it's terrible it's defending um why have we started the season so disjointly in a performance wise or or lack of a lacking in energy i don't know it's a difficult one to put your finger on maybe we just maybe we maybe it's because we had such a tough pre-season i don't know but that should that should make you even fitter but it's like i don't know it's, it's, it's like difficult the performances to say. in pre-season weren't so dissimilar to this um yeah i guess and it's like we've carried on kind of where we have left off at pre-season because i thought like we were just playing not that great in pre-season because you know we weren't intensity wasn't high because you know they're putting so much intensity into training and stuff like that and Conte was working them like crazy maybe um we just have to wait until the players get to grips with with how hard they did train in pre-season and uh, things will click at some point i don't yeah, know I yeah i still think the fitness is pretty good i know yesterday we didn't have a good second half but second halves in general this season have still been pretty good so from that from that side of things is it's, it's okay um i don't know it may maybe it's just we haven't clicked yet and once we start clicking things will things will go to plan um i just think um right now um we're we're struggling a bit I don't, it's difficult to put your finger on where we're where we're where we're really struggling oh, um, we're definitely struggling team. just passing the ball yeah i mean I, but the thing is our counter-attacking is still very good yeah. like we're still really even yesterday we we're still quite dangerous on the counter-attack i but think west ham gave us more possession last season there was a point in the season where we were actually really good at building play out from the back and and starting attacks from the back and building up the play this season it seems to be completely lost yeah i mean i wouldn't I wouldn't say in every game it's been completely lost. Yesterday definitely was, but I wouldn't say in every game it is. And I think when once Romero comes back and once Longley as well gets into the team, I think that will improve. I really think that will improve. And also once Basuma gets involved um, more in the team, I think that also going to improve because we're going to hopefully we're going to have someone who can really get on the ball and turn and um, and drive at the opposition. Whereas right now we don't really have that player. So I think we're. Uh, I think. There's no need to panic. There's no need to be too worried. I think obviously you have to acknowledge the struggles we've had, even though the results have still been good. I think you have to acknowledge that the performances haven't been top notch just yet. But I don't think there's any reason to be overly concerned just yet going into the season that this is going to be how we're going to play the whole season. And this is indicative of the whole team and all the players and everything like that. I think that's going a bit far. And I think the, the fact that we've got results while playing like this is, it also, is, is a proof that these players are still pretty good and even the system, though the system and works. the system's pretty good even though we're not playing the best right now so i think just people need to be a bit more patient i know we people want us to hit the ground running and be prime conte from minute one look conte even for intern chelsea has had slow starts to the season before before they really get going it's it's happened a few times so i wouldn't i wouldn't say that um just because we haven't been at our best so far that that means um that's going to be indicative of how we're going to play as well and also you know we're still 11 points out of 15 it's not to be sniffed at that's not it's easy to achieve one of our best starts in a long time exactly it's, that's not that's not to be sniffed at even though the performances haven't been at the best it's not to be sniffed at so mm. i think people are right to call out the performance is not being great but i don't think 
people panicking and you know saying this isn't good enough that's not good enough time to you know sh you know the board aren't being ambitious enough and all i mean you could argue that but i i think it's i don't think it's we need to panic just yet mm -hmm. but i would be i'm not gonna lie if we don't get anyone in deadline day which is looking um increasingly likely at this point yeah, that would be disappointing especially if we do let hill go and we don't get a replacement that does lead because we've only Richarlison up front yesterday. I know Moore was injured, so he's also to come in, but with only one option on the bench. But you've also had two wingbacks on the bench as well, which are very which are important attacking positions. Yeah. yeah, that's also people, true. People are failing to to point that one out. There will be all everyone's going out on social media. Oh, we've only had one attacking option on the bench, but no, we didn't because we also had Sessegnon and Spence on the bench who were attacking. Yeah, options. and Doherty as well. Yeah. And so, so I think that's a bit unfair on the squad, to be honest. I want. Oh, that's interesting. It looks like, uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, uh, Gvardia has extended his contract to Leipzig, and they rejected Chelsea's offer. Oh wow! So that's good news. So everyone that was panicking about Gvardia going to Chelsea, they can. Uh yeah, they can, they can chill, chill out, out, for out for a bit. Chill out for a bit. But look, I think um, we'll yeah. get into the transfer window in a bit. But I think that. To finish off the match review, let's be honest, yeah. Performances aren't great. Results aren't terrible. The results are good. good. Results are good. If we go out this weekend and, and go put in a really good performance against Fulham and create loads of chances and go win the game comfortably, you know, people, the narratives will start changing. And I saying, think, a, yeah, a lot, a lot is riding on the narrative on, on the weekend because let's say if we draw at home to Fulham, all of a sudden it goes from a really good start to three wins and three draws. And yeah. that's not amazing. Um, although it is still unbeaten. And even if we lose, that'll be three wins, two draws and defeat, which is a pretty average start. But if we win, that's four wins and two draws, which is a very good start. So a lot is riding on the result to how people will perceive how things are going right now. Mm. So, and it just shows how fickle like football is or perceptions and stuff like that. But that's the reality in terms of how we're starting to get us at the season. And as well, I think going into Man City we need to be in decent momentum uh, I'm hoping and uh, you know hopefully we'll have players back for that game and we'll be a lot fresher oh, than we are look Man City are looking against Haaland man. yeah I'm not looking forward to that at all nine goals already this season I mean it's I mean Kane's had a brilliant start with four goals in five and it's not, he's been blown out Haaland, the water Haaland just makes everything a joke literally everything a joke like all these players that are saying oh what a, what a great start to the season and Haaland just come hat trick hat trick back Not to back hat 90 tricks. minutes I mean he got taken off at like 60th minute he yesterday. probably had less touches than he did goals yesterday I wouldn't yes. be surprised <laughs> wouldn't guy, be surprised when it comes with the Haaland guy, the guy is an absolute animal I'm actually for the first time in a long time I'm actually frightened against coming up against the player well one, one thing I would say is all his goals have been um, like just in the six yard box haven't they except for that one that six yard box man except for that one where he uh, against Palace which was a good turn and finish. Like they've all been just—he's a poacher, man. That's what he does. Because he's just he's physically in and dominant around against anyone in this league. If he he get a run on anyone, that's the problem. And exactly, so you can't contain him unless you just cut off the supply. That's the only way. So it's going to be difficult to contain Haaland on uh, on uh, when we play them. Hopefully, maybe he will be injured or something. It's but like a cheat code. I say that I guy. say that, that Alvarez is also looking pretty good. So yeah. it's not like we—it's going to be easy to stop him as well. Mm. All right, well, that is your match review from the 1-1 draw at the London Stadium yesterday. Uh, we got a super chat here from Michael Hellman saying, I think the Arsenal 5-0 record and two consecutive hat-tricks for Haaland compounded the dis disappointment of the tie. Yeah. I think and I agree. I, I was saying this reality. yesterday in the, in the, in, in the re match reaction. I think that if Arsenal hadn't won five out of five, I think that people will actually be looking at our start a bit more positively. Yeah, for sure. I, I completely agree with that. And I think when you've got your North London rivals um, who were in your, who got, who finished, who we finished above last season, starting the season like we, like they have. Um, and we kind of, even though we started well, I mean, what, we're third in the league? Are we third? Third or fourth, yeah. I mean, we're third. I mean, it's like, like well, what's we're, there we're one of the only three unbeaten teams in the league. Yeah, I mean, what's there to be seriously angry about? Not not much, except it's for maybe, the performances. Yeah, maybe the level of some of the performances. But like, we're, we're, we we started the season pretty well in um, in in terms of how in terms of the results. So uh, I know Arsenal are um, I know Arsenal are playing well at the moment, and they've won every game, and and 
that probably that probably hurt, that probably is not nice to see for us and for a lot of fans it gets the anxiety people, going but people need to look at the perspective and, and look at it from 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 a whole you know look at the whole picture right i think we're in a stronger position with arsenal look at the squad yeah they they get a few injuries they really are, are they have out, had a few injuries and they're out on their legs a little bit i mean they played aston villa yesterday but let's see what happens against man united this weekend exactly they've had look let's be honest they first of all they played three at home and two away they've played like some of the easiest games uh, apart from apart from palace pretty much all of them they're probably all near the but i would hazard a guess all the teams they've played are near the bottom of the table uh bournemouth villa um who was it palace of 13 and Champions leicester League, one villa. so one two they've played three of the bottom five already in their first five games you know what i mean at the moment so mm. it's not like they've played um the creme de la creme of, of of the league they've played the worst performing teams pretty much so far in the in the division whereas spurs and the have hardest played... game that they had palace was probably the easiest time to play palace with that pre-season that they had yeah whereas we've had a lot more difficult fixtures to contend with um so it's only five games in people like there's no need to really panic and not only is it five games in but we're also unbeaten yeah <laughs> and, we're, and we're third so like <laughs> like honestly there's not mu- I, I, for me i'm pretty happy with how things are going i understand people have a bit of anxiety and maybe they be, might be proved right if you know results start going against us but i think right now looking the bigger picture we're in a good position and there's nothing to be too, we're too worried about but we've just got to hope that performances start to click sooner rather than later and look Arsenal are clicking at the moment they're only just getting past Fulham only just getting past Villa so once they start getting more difficult fixtures the well, we points say only drop. just getting past Villa they had about 8-10 shots on target yesterday yeah well <laughs> they only did just get past them 2-1 <laughs> another super chat here from Sanju saying we need Kuti back the team looks so much more confident with him in it Sanchez is fine against weak teams Lenglei, Doc, Spence need a chance soon hopefully that improves the team in possession and i think kuti um, and longley uh, but especially kuti will make a massive difference to that because we don't really know about longley just yet um but yeah but, but, but i think longley in turn like i think he will make a difference i really believe that no, with the with the qualities that he have he should make a difference but it's just a bit of an unknown quantity him in the premier league we don't know how he's going to take to the premier league and you know what i mean because he hasn't played there before. yeah but in terms of like the profile of player and stuff mm. Yeah, I'm hoping that he's one that that can really improve our our team in possession um, going forward. So, and I think there are moments as well where Davis gets forward and you know he's too slow; he can't get past a man or anything. He's on the overlap; he's so easy to deal with. Let's hope that um, let's hope Longley his passing could be a lot better, and he can and he can actually make a bit more of a difference than uh, than Davis can. Although Davis has been okay, I just yeah, let's. Uh, Hope Longley can be the, the player that we want to need him to be. Um, just before we start getting guests on, let's quickly touch over the transfer window. Um, yeah. Coming into the last day, shuts at 11 o'clock tonight. Um, doesn't look like, well, Dan Kilpatrick says it's uh, it's looking increasingly, I don't know what the words he said, but it does. It looks unlikely that we might get he someone Spurs, in today. Spurs are expecting a quiet day. That, that's the one. Spurs are expecting a quiet day. I think we've heard that on transfer deadline days fucking every time. Yeah, for a while now. <laughs> Sorry um, for my French, by the way. But um, are you expecting anything? What are your expectations today? It's hard. I don't know what to expect with Spurs anymore, honestly. If, if all I'll say is if we let go of hill and we don't get anyone in then i think conte has been left short a bit i really believe that up front with, with two, for now with anyway two spaces if doing... left in the squad how, how is that okay to go into a season with two spaces left in the squad in four competitions with two spaces left in the squad what do you mean because we've got an option we've got enough space now to bring in one more homegrown player one more non-homegrown homegrown player in the squad in the 25-man squad right okay uh, if, assuming hill leaves that is yeah so i mean how is that okay to go in with two players less than what we probably had last season with four competitions including the champions league because maybe the players we he's more he's more willing to use the players that we do have well last season he wasn't willing to even use a lot of them mm. because they, we just didn't trust him but at least now we have more players that he trusts i'm hoping so maybe that would be of benefit to us and we have a high quality we do have more depth now um in some positions i just feel the forward line we have look we have we have four very good options and one very quite average option in mora yeah like we just need another one i feel just so we have a bit more option to change it up if we really want to like 
if we if we have one injury up front and then all of a sudden we have no one off the bench that's that's a pretty much the situation we're in um going forward so um even if Hill's there, at least he could be an option to come off the bench to, to try and make something happen if, if need be. If he's not there to do that and we don't have anyone else, that's going to be an extremely frustrating um, position to be in. Mm. So even if it is Dan James, like even um, 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 Dan Kilpatrick says Dan James is expected to leave Leeds today, but Spurs are not the front runners, he said. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I mean, so that's also a bit uh, weird, but even if it is Dan James, at least he can just be an option that... Um, Conte can I use. I prefer to bring him in than bring nobody in. Yeah, 100%. That's the honest truth. 100%. But people, I've seen people doing the rounds on social media, like a lot of people saying, I'd rather nobody than Dan James. No, I'd rather Dan James. I mean, part of me would rather Hill than we James. Men. But, but yeah. You know what? Yeah, I, I wouldn't prefer Hill than Dan James. I wouldn't. And the reason because is, I think Hill needs to have consistent game time for his development. And I'd prefer to develop Hill and keep Dan James as like a fifth option, sixth option, where we can use him sparingly and, and use him when we can and when we want. If Hill stays here and we use him like that, that's not going to do anything for his development. Mm. So he needs to play consistent minutes to get his development up and maybe come back next year as a stronger player. Yeah, but maybe when he maybe him having minutes in the Premier League, even if it's le a lot less, is more valuable than playing in La Liga. What, potentially, week week I don't know. Potentially, it's, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? No, I think I agree with you. I probably w I, it depends. If we're only loaning James, then I think I'd rather keep Hill. If we're buying him, then yeah, I guess I'd rather him. But but, we'll, I think I, I'd prefer to loan James. I wouldn't want to buy James. I prefer to loan him because I would want a better option in in next summer. You know what I mean? Loan him and send him back to Leeds next summer and hopefully get a better option. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, according to The Sun, West Ham have asked about a loan deal for Matt Doherty, but the deal seems, seems unlikely, mm. which would be interesting. if uh, Surely Doherty doesn't want to go there, you'd think. You'd think he wants to stay. <sighs> Do you think Lucas Moore is better than Dan James now? Because he's like declined quite a bit. He's declined in the last few months quite badly. Um, I would say, from a from a technical point of view, I think he's a better dribbler. I think he's better he, even when when it comes to shooting. It's amazing to talk about Lucas Moura, but I think he's a better. He's got a better shot on him. I do think James maybe is a, a bit of a better crosser, um, but I do think Lucas as well is a bit more of a creative passes. Has a bit more creativity about him. So. Like for the like for example, like that's why Lucas looks quite decent when he plays centrally. I think Dan James would be awful if he played centrally. I think he'd be one of the worst players on the pitch. So I think Lucas is probably a better player. But Dan James might offer you a bit more if he's got space to play with. The thing is with Dan James, the only thing that I think he does really well is pressing. He's a very good pressing forward. I mean, mm. maybe his quality is not very good, like in terms of shooting, crossing and and being an actual winger. But I think actually his pressing is really good. And, and to bring him on in the last like 20 minutes of games with fresh legs and really start to press the opposition into making mistakes actually could work. What's this about Brian Hill? Brian Hill's flight to Mestaya did not arrive. Valencia are now working on other deals. Timothy Ware and Justin Cliver, they are the ones likely most. Looks like Brian Hill might be staying. Yeah, Matteo Moretto says it. Gil to Valencia is off. So I so guess if looks, Gil to Valencia is off, then we're not getting we're anyone. We're not getting anyone this today. We're not getting anyone. So Hill's going to be staying, it looks like. What an absolute shh. It's a mess because we know that Conte doesn't think that Hill's ready for the Premier League. Yeah. We know it. So. We're leaving him short. It's as simple as that. It's very frustrating. It's as simple as that. We're leaving ourselves short, go up front. <sighs> it's very frustrating. If we don't bring anyone in, we both said yesterday it's a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Do you still stick with that? Yeah, I said it yesterday and I, st I, do, I do stick with that. Because I, I think there, we had a lot of things to do this window. And I think we've done a lot of them. But we haven't done everything. And just but you have to acknowledge the stuff we have done. Well, while you can also acknowledge the stuff we haven't, but what we have done is also pretty good. So I think we've that we've done so, a lot of good stuff, but we've left some holes, which 
look, we haven't had the perfect window, and that's why it's a seven out of ten. It's not an eight or a nine or a ten. Hmm. For me, I think left back is left wing backs improved, the forward lines improved, the centre midfields improved, and um, left centre back has uh, hopefully improved. But even in a good window for us, a seven out of ten, we come away frustrated. Yeah, because I think the most frustrating thing is that we got so much business done early that we had a lot of time to deal with these other things, and we just didn't. I do and think that's, that's a bit of disaster. That's quite frustrating. I do think that. Do you think that this is the situation where they drew out that 100 million? It wasn't 150 in the end, it was 100 million. Yeah. We had a net spend of 60, 65 or whatever it was. And then we confirmed Romero for 40 million. Is that 100 million? Does Romero come into this year's budget? Probably, yeah. So that's 100 million, right? And then we were told that any, any player sells um, that come in will be used for transfer window. But no player sells did come in. They were all loans. Yeah. So do you reckon that's the thing that held us back then this summer? Um... I don't think it helped, but that shouldn't be the case because we've got we should have money. There's no reason why we shouldn't have money to spend. Mm. So even look, they could they can make the argument, and I understand what that, I understand the argument, but I don't buy it. I don't think that's a good enough reason not to splash out a few more million. Like we could get we could have got Malinowski for twenty million. You know what I mean? It's not exactly the mass, a massive outlay. So I don't think it's an excuse that oh we couldn't get fees for these other players because we could have there there are definitely players we could have got for not massive sizable fees, and there could have been another option for us for uh, to to play. So. I think if they do use that as an excuse, then that's uh, that's very frustrating uh, for me. Um, I can't I, see any other excuse, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't see why we wouldn't have money mm. with all the with everything that we have going for us right now. But it looks like Hill is staying, and that must be very uh, frustrating for um, Brian Hill himself, because clearly he would have got a lot more game time. Arthur Mello to Liverpool. Here we go from Fabrizio Romano. Um, it looks like we are going to be having a very quiet deadline day, people. With uh, if Hills, I think. Look, that was the only thing we were really, really looking at, wasn't it? Hill, um, Brian Hills moved Unless to Valencia. A late move comes for Tanganga, but apparently, they won't even let Tanganga go anymore because they can't. We can't get, get anyone now. in, so I don't see that happening either. So I think we. <laughs> it's a uh, 11:30. We might be done already. Yeah. Which is a bit frustrating. Uh, if that loan moves on, Watford saying Watford and Danny Rose have mutually cancelled the contracts, so Danny is not a Watford player anymore, and he can carry on his work with Tottenham under 21s. Um, and also, apparently, Jan Vertonghen. I just saw a thing that he's going to Anderlecht today. Mm, yeah. So good is. luck to to Big Jan. And he'll Vertonghen. be playing against um, West Ham. West Ham. Yeah. Nice. Um, so that's that. I mean, transfer window looking like it's going to be very quiet today. Um, and without further ado, just before we get the guest on, I just want to say we are um, running short of time today, so we we'll have to um, breeze through these guests. So we won't have to, we won't be able to get you on for that long. But um, let's start off with KPV. How you doing, KPV? Hello. You all right? I'm good. What do you want to talk yeah. about today? Well, first off. Let me just say, yesterday was 10 years ago that we signed Hugo Loway and Nephew. Yeah, it was indeed. And then yeah. um, he does that to uh, let us concede a goal yesterday. Yeah, like for some the players he's played with, sent him a little message. Michael Dawson, Defoe, Lamella, Jan, but I'm surprised Toby didn't send him a message. I'm surprised Toby didn't. I'm sure I'm Toby surprised. sent him a text, don't I'm worry. Kidding. Yeah, like, 10 years for Hugo, 10 years, 10 saves, 10 whatever it said as well, but brilliant goalkeeper, couldn't have asked for a better captain. But, yeah, he is the best goalkeeper, I must say. Yeah, but to do that, you, can, you let those spammers equalise, like, what the fuck, kid? Do not do that on Saturday against Fulham because they seem to score. But we all know who loves scoring against us, and that's the striker Mitro. But yeah, I was a bit annoyed we let those lot equalise last night. And yeah, but you know what day it is today? It's deadline day, people! Yeah. It's, it's deadline not very exciting day. for us Spurs fans, and though, is it? Oh, okay. 
Like, <laughs> like, fair enough. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but... but you expect expecting any transfers but, today, Carl? Yeah. No, I don't think so, because no one seems to want and James. Like, yeah, another Welshman, Ben Davis, would probably want him, because they're both playing the Welsh national team. So, why not? Another Welsh player, and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, another Welsh player to play alongside Davis. And the good news is, Joe Roden scored yesterday. Great news. Yeah. Not for news. us, not for us though, <laughs> but he did Great score, news. yeah. Great news, yeah. Uh, yeah, Joe Roden. Look, the game, I'm still pissed off. Like, the last two times we went there, we've lost. But at least we've now got another London derby point. We've got Fulham and then Champions League night, baby. Looking Champions League night it. on Wednesday. Looking forward to it, Carl. You going? But, um, yeah, we're going. But I think we're going to have to breeze through these callers because we are running out of time. So thank you very much Lovely. for joining us today, Carl. Nice one, Kyle. Nice one, boys. And I'll see you Saturday or Sunday, hopefully. All right. Absolutely. Nice one, mate. Come nice Spurs. One. Bye. Big up. Big up, KPV. We've got a few super chats to get through before we go on to the next guest. Sandrew saying, I wouldn't mind keeping Hill under Nuno. He played him as a 10 and he looked quite decent. I think keeping Hill would improve him. Loaning him out would put him back to square one. Hill is similar to Kulu. What would you say to that? Uh, he's not similar to Kulu because Kulu's biggest strength is his strength. <laughs> and and that's Hill's biggest weakness. So um, I don't like in that sense, he's, I don't think he's very similar to Kulu at all. Uh, he follows up, that up by saying, uh, Sandrew, with another super chat. He says, by going back to Spain, I don't think he'll develop physically. I think Conte's physical training will help him and he'll get chances with the fixtures. Yeah, I, I, I think it's that's a good partly point, true. It's a good I point. think that's partly true, yeah. Um, I think... That I think Conte will hopefully take him up a notch physically, but um, um, well, whether he'll get the game time, you know, whether he trusts him enough to start games and stuff. Look, it means he's gonna he's gonna have to be starting Champions League games and stuff. Mm. That's the reality if we have him, because yeah. we we don't have the numbers. So let's just hope he can uh, step up for us. Mm. All right, let's get on our next guest, and it's Wakey Wakey Hassan. <laughs> How you doing, Hassan? You all right? Yeah, hey, I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, all good, thanks. Um, look, we're going to have to breeze uh, through these callers, but give yeah, me your thoughts no on the game yesterday. Um, poor game. Uh, didn't really look like we were going to win it. Uh, same type of performances we've seen the, the last couple of games. And um, it showed that we needed more chances, but from what we're hearing, looks like we're wrapping up early so yeah it's just one of those things the same stuff same things happened we were just slow with the ball the back line was weak and um yeah it was hard to watch yeah it was a bit frustrating yeah, wasn't it what um in terms of the window looks like Hill was set to stay now um looks like his deal with Valencia is off and doesn't look like we're going to be doing any more business um today uh are you frustrated with that? Are you, oh, is he gone? Oh, he's gone. Oh, he's, oh, he's back. There. You're back. Um, oh, sorry, can actually that's all right. Yeah, I'm saying Hill was, uh, looks like he's set to stay now with uh, no option yeah. um, to coming in. Is that a source of frustration for you? Do you think we have enough to cope until yeah. at least January? No. No, we don't. I mean, we have four good options in the forward line with um, Charleston adding to the to the front three. But if, if one of those get injured... And then Richardson has to start. Who are we bringing off off the bench? Right. I mean, Lucas seems to have some sort of injury. Conte doesn't really think, you know, Hill's ready for the Premier League. So, so what does he do? What What do we do to change a game? Which is why I didn't mind if we brought in someone like Adama Traore, because mm-hmm. you know, 80th minute, you put him on. And the defense, the opposing defense is scared. Just someone, someone to give Conte options. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we lose a few games, if Conte starts to, you know, stir the pot and you start seeing some interesting quotes come out from him because he, 
doesn't want Gil. He doesn't want him to, to be in the Premier League and sign and Kulu stay fit throughout the season. In full competition. Otherwise you're gonna Exactly. Otherwise you're gonna have Hill having to start at least some Premier League games. At mm. least you're gonna have him start because because we want those three more transfers. Maybe six. Six. Mm. And and that's being kind. I mean, I think Richarlison, good. Perisic, good. Basuma, good. Longley, we don't know. At, at left centre back, Spence, we don't know. At right wing back. Without yeah. Romero, our our back three looks like it, like just abomination. And then we don't have attacking options on attacking midfielder. So when you say without Romero, our, our back three is an abomination. But we- you know, people like the whole part with Sanchez not scoring, not not conceding for nine hours. Yeah. Okay, but it just takes like a good front three, a good attacking, you know, unit to put it. Like the moment he got pressured, Conte's way. When Romero and Longley um, start, and they will start eventually. I think our performances will increase substantially because you can actually start playing out from the back. The right side won't be so, um, you know, lost, right? At least Romero and Kulazowski will be able to do something and hopefully Spence gets to go as well. But I don't know. It, it's, if Romero too gassed too early with the early signings and it's sort of just going downhill and I'll be surprised to see what um, Conte has to say after the trying. All right, Hassan. Thanks for coming on today. Really good call. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. See you later. See you, man. According to Get French Football News journalist, Newcastle have submitted a loan request for Tottenham forward Lucas Moura. Yeah, I was hearing uh, some rumours about uh, Moura to Villa last night as well. Yeah, they were saying that, but this is from Get French Football News saying Interesting. Newcastle submitted a loan request for Surely Lucas Surely we can't we let can't. him leave if we're, if we're, if we're no. not letting Hill leave. No, we can't. <laughs> we can't let him leave. If we're not getting anyone in, we can't let anyone leave. Like, how, how, is that, how does that make any sense for us? Uh, and if the fact we're, if we if we are entertaining them leaving, that shows we don't think they're good enough. Like, yeah. So that's also a worry as well. Um, so I don't know. It's very. It looks like we're in for a difficult deadline day. We're going to have to just stomach <sighs> it, and hopefully, we need uh, to get the football back. Is this another case of Daniel Levy up to his old tricks again? I mean, the only difference is is that he's done the business early, which is what we've been calling for, which is good. He hasn't done, he's done he hasn't, some business early, but it's not. Yeah, I mean, he's done six signings early, yeah. seven signings, well, six signings early. Doji was what a few weeks ago, so that's good, that's positive, that's a step in the right direction. But the fact that he hasn't, that we haven't made any moves um, in the subsequent months is frustrating, hundred percent, definitely frustrating. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what what to put it down to. I need, I, need, I guess I need time to think about it. Is it Daniel Levy up to his old tricks? I mean, if 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 with the fact they're saying we have no money, then it definitely is. Yes. If, if they're saying we're not doing it because That's we have no hearing. money, then then a hundred percent. Uh, leave that's that's on Levy because N- Paratici doesn't decide how much money we have to spend. Conte doesn't decide how much money we have to spend. Levy decides how much we have money we have to spend. Well, got Paratici and got Conte in. We got to trust mm-hmm. in them, right? Hundred percent. So why would if they? If it all depends if uh, how hard we're we're you know the the coaching staff are pushing for another player but it sounds like we definitely want one so we must be pushing for someone and if they're if they're trying to you know sign someone with no money looking for loan requests it's obviously going to really uh hamper our possible yeah and also though the fact of the matter is is when last season ended when we were talking about transfer windows the noise coming out of the club was we were going to prioritize center back one maybe two and a right wing back we've brought in spence who conte is not giving a chance to as of yet. He might do, but we don't know if he will or not. Mm. We're, he- we're hearing he was going to spend time on the under 23s. Um, we were hearing as well that we potentially were thinking about him going out on loan that he didn't want to do. The centre back, fine. We don't get Bastoni, so we get um, we get Longley, and I'm happy with Longley. But you've got to bring in one more as well. You have to bring in one more. So what what's, what's going on with with these kind of targets? Um. Why haven't we brought in a right wing back that was going to really push us on this year? 
I don't know. I think maybe we decided to invest in Spence and who could be a long-term thing. And, and I think maybe as well, the form of Emerson and Doherty have led to a situation where maybe we're more content with the right wing back spot than the fans are. And maybe that's the case. I don't know. It's like, It shouldn't be that case because when you're seeing Perisic on the left, that is what you call a proper wing back. Mm. I don't mind Emerson. I like Emerson as a player, but you can see the clear flaws going forward. Nowhere near Perisic's level. Absolutely nowhere near. So I think we've. Uh, I think it's a case of we. We. Be- I think the club have decided we're going to sign Spence, and we could. We're going to have to believe in that signing, and hopefully he can be the player that we want him to be. It might take more time, and we might have to deal with Emerson and Doherty for another six months. Might might have been another year, but maybe in the long term, Spence will come good, mm-hmm. and that's what we got to hope for. Um, the fact of the matter is, we never we didn't sell. We didn't sell Doherty or, or uh, Emerson, did we? Not sell them. I don't know if that's down to the leadership. I don't think I don't think that's down to the boardroom. The the fact the fact that we got Spence in clearly is because Conte. I really would like to see him given want, a chance, man. Who sooner Spence. rather than later? Yeah. Yeah, because he could be that other attacking option that we need mm-hmm. um, on the other side. Um, so. Yeah, apparently latest is Tottenham cannot find a replacement for Hill, so they've told the player that he is staying. That's from uh, reports in out in Absolute Spain. Absolute mess, man. So um, that is. Anyway. But we've had the problem is with this. The issue I have is not that we can't find replacements. That we've had so long to find a replacement. It's not that I'm not angry that we haven't got someone on deadline day. I'm angry that it's been months and we haven't found one, which we knew we've known for a long time that we needed another one. you just go out there and get Ismail Yassar or something? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... It, there are options out there that you can get that are going to be better than Brian Hill and much better than Dan James. Even Adama Traore. Yeah, I'll take Adama I'll, right I'll take Adama Traore and Adama, we could probably get him for 10 million. Exactly. Adama's not even getting on the on the pitch for Wolves. Get him on. Get him in. Why not? Into, you know, um, a bit of an uh, average to above average window, which is a bit bit frustrating but i still think we've done good business i think the business we have done has been good and also you've got to factor in that we have had a lot of deadwood that people have been complaining about to get out of the club i know they're on if they've, they're not there here at the moment so that's a positive but there are still a few holes which we had we had time to sort and um in that time um and if it's because we, and if we didn't get the business done because of money then i'm very frustrated about that mm. Uh, how many guests do we have, Jake? One. One. All right, last guest of the show, and we're saving the best till last. This is the Jorical. Let's bring him on. Jory, how you doing, brother? Oh, mute. Mute again, Jory, every time. What's going on? Oh, no, it's, 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 it's us. It's, it's us. Argos. <laughs> Jory! Sorry, Jory. Jory, for God's hey. sake, man. <laughs> Hi, um, Jory, well, how you doing? I'm good. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm not too happy as as you guys. Uh, you know, is is why is this happening? Whatever. It's clear that Levy stopped the money at some point and uh, held off for this bargaining to last two days, and he's messing it up once again. You know, it was clear yesterday that Conte, oh, and before that, that Conte is not happy about. Uh, I'm asking you guys: Is it confirmed we're not going for Sieg or? Or any of these. Uh... It was at the training ground. But as of now, uh, as of a quarter to 12 on our Thursday on deadline day, the Hill deal is off and we're not finding a replacement. That's what it seems. Unless that changes, it looks like that's going to be the state of play. Um, and mm. I, it does seem very unlikely we will find a replacement. So um, what, what, do you, what do you believe about that? Do you think we have enough um, to go in our forward line to last us till January? Or Well, I mean... To be honest, I think we can. We if we keep Lucas and Hill, uh, and and Hill, will will it won't be ideal. But I'm sure Conte can make that work. For me, Conte make made a bigger point yesterday, and and was for me was absolutely I couldn't couldn't fathom why why it was happening. But this decision to all of a sudden uh, play so heavily out the back to disastrous uh, result was for me. A Mourinho type sabotage of, of the of the game to make the statements. Yeah, I don't have what I need, you know. And I do believe. I mean, even though I haven't heard Conte, I, I just refuse to believe that Conte hasn't been been furiously trying to get a centre back in this window. I, I I can't believe that because this is 
were leaving the whole project open uh, at the back end. It's completely uh, the whole thing can come come tumbling down, you know, uh, because a leak, leaky backline, you know, and and we can see it, you know, if we don't have Romero to start the, the build up play, then we don't have build up play uh, yesterday in the first half. But then in the second half, we started to play slowly out uh, from the back and it was disastrous, you know, so um, mm. So I, I, I'm kind of convinced that Conte really set them up for failure there, to be honest. Um, but Jory, if, uh, if, Conte, yeah. if Conte was unhappy uh, with the business that we've done or the business that we're doing, wouldn't we have mm -hmm. heard a bit more about it in the press conferences or heard inklings of it in the press conferences? Because we know when Conte is not happy, we hear about it. Yeah. No, because Conte is a fair man and Conte will... Levy will have told him this and that and whatever. And uh, okay, Levy, you came good at the start of the window and I got si good signings and you paid the bill and so on. And I have to allow you now for for what you're saying here, what you're convincing me of. I might be skeptical, but I, I can't kind of uh, completely just brush it off and unless I'm like acting like it's none of your business, which of course should be like that, but it w it's clear to all of us that Levy has been involved with the, the money of, of the whole window, basically. So the mm. Spence thing is famously uh, like there. But I do believe that, that um, I mean, I, I ask you guys, listen, that how this window started, for me, it says Paracici all day. I've been, been watching uh, um, All or Nothing Juventus as well, you know, and you mm. can see how it works there, you know, behind the scenes. He, the man's a master at it, you know, he knows what he's doing. The, the start of our window completely was was completely executed faultlessly, like Basuma, all of the Ben steel, you know, so everything else went flawless. So are we now to believe that Perchichi all of a sudden takes a, a, a break from all of this and now is scrambling the last two days? Of course not. Levy stopped the money at some point. Give Levy half the chance to be stingy and he will take it. Mm -hmm. The fact that he signed all these players in the start of the window was his justification to put off other deals, other deal. You know, let's wait, let's see if we get a better deal, if this might become available and whatever. And I'm sure that in some, in some delusional way, Levy kind of believes these things himself, you know, but, you know, uh, we, we all have seen this, this tune before and, and we have no faith in it. And, the bigger worry is that, you know, Conte is now stepped on the wrong path. You know, he has lost faith in the board. You know, I'm not saying he's on his way out or nothing, but this is a this is a minus point for the board. You know, he is not. He, we had him completely on board. We had a five-year kind of a thing going. You know, now we go into Kane's not signed. Conte is not signed. And this is how, how Conte feels about it. I think we all, I mean, I ask you guys, don't you see Conte's uh, this Conte. And Conte said it's going to take two, another two transfer windows to, to get the squad I, where it I needs to that, be. Yeah, but I think all of that is, is Conte's diplomatic answer to it. And Conte is trying to be, you know, he's, he doesn't have the, the players and, and so on, you know. And he's, he's been clear, I can't, quote him directly but i've i've seen it I, I read that clearly through the lines that that we're not covered for this season you know in his mind and um and uh, yeah i, I like that I, I think he's not um he's, he's he's not at all happy with the window so uh yeah, Jory, let, think, me ask uh, you, let me ask you yeah. this. In terms of the window that we've had, what do you think that yeah. we can achieve this season? Is it good enough for a top four push, maybe a top three push and a trophy? We don't have a choice anymore. You know, we have, we have set up the thing now that anything other than top four is, is a big failure. Um, you could argue that anything other than top four and a, and a trophy is a failure. Uh, for me, I will, I will accept, considering how this window is now ending, I'll accept maybe um, the top four only, but anything under top four and no trophy, that, 
that's like then we got Conte walking. I think that's not. But do you believe we have no, enough for it? Enough in the squad. It's our own doing. You know, I don't think it's about the the places. I think it's like if we if our board goes out and shoots itself in in Conte's foot, basically, then Conte won't stand for it. And that's what they're kind of doing here. I think you know. So. Uh, uh, I think, I mean, for, I'll ask you guys, don't you feel like the whole project for this season is is very, under very, um, is, we're taking a really big risk with having no center, new centre-back options, you know? Yeah, for, I believe we are. Yeah. I believe we are. Yeah. And I was expecting, yeah. uh, from the beginning of the transfer window, from when we it started so well, I was expecting, mm -hmm. you know, a top centre back to come in. I was expecting uh, someone to to challenge Kudasevsky on that right hand side, and I was even expecting a, a top right wing back to come in as well. To be honest, I think we all were, and and like we're we're way past that. I think the last week we've been thinking just get somebody in. Like you're saying, Adama. Now's the time to take that ten million deal you know it's it's mm -hmm. a joke in terms of money you know uh, just do it so we have something to to mess about with when, when we come into the last uh, part of the game but for me the big big thing is like i i think this this project is 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 um has has a gaping hole not having the leader in the in the back line um because Dyer showed yesterday that he he's not He's not. He's been good and all that, but he's not that guy, and we need that guy. But I was, I was off that thinking. Even and anyway, I was just thinking we just need some, somebody a ball playing centre back. It doesn't need to be a world class now. We just need an option for the centre, and preferably to the right, and preferably to both sides, to be honest. But but at least for the centre and to the right, you know, in case Romero gets injured, which he, he does quite a bit, you know, he, the, the way he plays is going to always going to uh, get him out for a couple of games here and there, you know, so. Uh, Jory, how uh, do you think our, our yeah. squad, how do you think our, sorry, how do you think our squad stacks up against our rivals in terms of Chelsea and Arsenal and Man United? Uh, I still think, I, I still think we're all right in that in that regard and um it, i mean i think overall I, I i have so much faith in conte in that regard that that i do think that we will perform and we'll get it over over the line i do think that that uh, the thing uh, like the squads i think man united better squad chelsea better squad um uh, 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 arsenal not better squad but but actually more cohesion and, and further along maybe in their project, more, more, more cohesive project uh, around there now at the, with their um, project. But I would say uh, the Conte kind of trumps all of that for me. Uh, Man United still a toxic place. I don't believe it's gonna, gonna change uh, this season at all to, to put, put him under pressure there, I think. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, we have, we have, we are the club that have left ourselves open for the most pain of all the clubs. I think now, you know, of these clubs that you mentioned, Ben, I think we are the ones that are, are giving the biggest opportunity to our opponents to come and hurt us. You know, we didn't need to do this. We could have two more signings of quality and, and it would be secured in my mind. Now we have a league back line that's going to be in big trouble as soon as Romero's out. And, and we have a patsy, right? With, with a little bit extra cash, why wouldn't you secure all the good work you did at the start of the window? I don't like this. Is so yeah, that's, that's the frustrating so thing, isn't it? We did so much good work early and we've yeah. had time to address. It's not like we haven't had time to address these next issues and we just no. we've let it we've let it drag on and now we're in a situation yeah. of a deadline day and we can't do anything no and you know guys it's no no matter how we flip it there's one guy that has a 20-year mo of mm. behaving like this and his name is daniel you know so 
Um, yeah. I, yeah. I and if, if, this, if this is a money issue, then it has to be on Levy's yeah. head. Because there's no reason. Because like we're saying like now, like 10 million for Adama, it will make mm-hmm. a big, big uh, impact in a squad sense at this point. And it's a, it's a non-issue money-wise. I don't understand why this is. I mean, maybe that's one where Conte says, no, I don't want to do these patsy uh, uh, you know, kind of like that, you know, we need to build for real, not not just always go for the bargain bin as we've done too much. Um, but when, when we actually are, we, we did great work and we've actually, we, we've like 60% of, of, of our team is now in a place where, where it fits for the long-term uh, project. Mm. But we're leaving the 40% completely untouched. You know, so yeah. which I be again one. I think, um, to be honest, uh, but it might be a class. You know, Levy wants the bargain bin, and Conte is not going to accept that, and so on. You know, so I mean, it might make a little bit more sense. Why they like, like, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys were at the game. Now I have a great appreciation for your, your guys. You guys, uh, how how you your take is on things. You know. Especially after being at the game with you and seeing you, you um, spot everything out, uh, Simon Ben. Uh, I think <laughs> it looked like it wasn't till after the game that I kind of um, started thinking in that way. And I, like I don't understand why we switched because the first half was was working. It was boring game. It was very slow, but it would have it would have uh, given us another goal in the second half if we had kept that system up. And, mm. and we changed for the, for the much more risky system, uh, um, you know, and Luris, you know, was completely caught, caught uh, yeah, messing it up as we all saw. So um, I don't know. What do you think, guys? Did, did it, do, do, do you feel like it was... Um, did it make any sense in the stadium watching it? What, how the second half? It didn't, uh, to be honest. I thought Conte um, should have made changes on yeah, the stand either. I thought Hoybier yeah. should have been taken off. Skip was there on the bench. But he did say in his press conference that um, he didn't want to bring Skip on because he didn't think Skip was 100% ready and he only put him on the bench so he can be part of the team and feel the atmosphere of being part of a team again. So it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. We didn't really have options then if he didn't want to bring Skip on. No, and whether it's whether it's Conte making a statement or if it's just actually the the facts, it comes down to the same thing. We don't have options. We're in trouble. If if a couple of key players are out out of the loop, then we're in big trouble. The whole thing is is uh, liable to collapse. Uh, mm. So yeah, we we I think we've we've done the least to to help ourselves in this window. I remember I called in, uh, I think uh, around Jul- Jul- 1st of July or something, and I said, if the window ends like this, it's a seven at best. If we add on these, which I was convinced that we were gonna do, I, I then said there was a big debate going on. And I said, the way it looks to me, we're heading towards a eight or a nine at least, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess we're gonna stop at seven and, and Actually, it's not even a seven anymore because now you have what all the other teams have done since then, you know, which is strengthen a lot more, you know. So we haven't reacted to that in any way, which is insane. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit annoying, isn't it? Because we started such a proactive window and then we end up reacting. Yeah. When Why can't we be proactive throughout the window? It's a bit frustrating, isn't it? Um, a brand new signing, but don't. Uh, I'm not holding my breath. Prove us wrong, Levy. Prove us wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for coming on, Jory. We'll speak to you later. Okay, take care, guys. See Cheers. ya. Oh, a few um, interesting things going on, uh, on. transfer-wise. Run us through the, uh, the latest of the ongoings before we uh, move on to the play ratings and stuff. Um, so MC Sport have said that PSG have submitted a 17 million euro pound bid, including bonuses for Milan Skriniar on deadline day. And uh, Inter Milan will uh, yet to respond to it. So we'll see how that one goes. And another interesting move happening. Carlos Vinicius is set to sign for Fulham for 5 million. Really? Yeah. 
Oh. Carlos Vinicius and he could, and Arsenal apparently have agreed personal terms with Douglas Luiz and have now submitted a twenty million pound bid. Yeah, that's going to get for done. the midfielder. I, I think if you heard uh, Gerard speaking about it yesterday, and that's twenty million. Done. Apparently, uh, Aston Villa have said today a few times that he is definitely not going to leave. But at twenty million with one year left on his contract, you have to think that's going to get done. Mm, it's good signing for them as well. Uh, that has to surely you think contract terminated as well um, from Watford. Um, so he is available. Maybe we'll get him in it as a wing back. Who knows? Mm. Um, but that's um, that's the state latest. It looks like as well. Dan Capacho saying the most likely thing down for Tottenham is Mora potentially leaving. But I don't see how that can how he can leave if uh, if we don't have anyone coming in. It would make absolutely no sense. Mm. Well. We'll keep you updated as and when anything happens. Uh, player ratings and five takeaways up next. But thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, you Spurs. Spurs.